am so excited to talk about something that connects us all, and that is food. I am going to be talking about why it is so important to understand what we eat and how access to data can be the key to solving big problems. I moved to Iceland a little bit over six years ago to complete a master's program in sustainability. I quickly learned that living in Iceland is pretty expensive, especially back when I was a student. So like many of my peers, I started working in the food service industry. I worked at a local restaurant. I was making juices and taking orders and making sandwiches. It was really great. Though, when I was on closing shift, I noticed that there was always food that had gone bad or would be bad the next day and had to be thrown away. I wanted to do something to solve this problem. So I started taking food home and giving it away to friends, anything so that it wouldn't end up as tomorrow's garbage. This was hard from enough to solve the issue. I ended up creating a spreadsheet to record everything that we threw away. And this was to understand what we were over ordering. The restaurant owners loved the idea and they implemented my process in all of their locations. Unfortunately, the actual implementation wasn't as straightforward. We found that people working in restaurants weren't all keen to extend their already long working hours to wrangle data. Now, I start with my experience in this restaurant because although it was only my first time experiencing large-scale food waste, it is a large part of my story. It was the first time that I understood how pervasive food waste is, and it was also proof that data could be helpful. Now, back to the restaurant. I knew there had to be a better way of doing things, so I recruited a brilliant friend of mine, Jillian Burbert, who is a geophysicist by training, a machine learning wizard, and was also working in restaurants. Together, we started talking to other people working in restaurants and figuring out if they knew how to keep from throwing so much food away. They didn't have the answer either, but we knew that the solution had to be something that could easily be implemented into the working lives of restaurateurs. During my master's program, I was working in the energy field. This exposed me to predictive forecasting. And so with this knowledge, making, using artificial intelligence to predict future sales in restaurants and using these future sales predictions to make customized, personalized uh, shopping lists for restaurants to tell them what to order in the next few days made a lot of sense to us. My friend and colleague and I have been working to bring artificial intelligence to restaurants for the past three years. In this time, we have seen that food waste is not exclusive to restaurants and it has become apparent that food waste has to be addressed holistically because we've been looking at bringing this technology to prevent food waste before it happens. And this happens at every stage of the food supply chain. Now, I'm gonna throw some data at you. One third of all food produced globally ends up in the garbage. One third. You may have heard the statistic before, but it is really difficult to conceptualize what this means, especially because food waste means a lot of things. Food waste means greenhouse gas pollutants, a lot of them. Food waste actually emits three times more emissions than all of the planes on our planet. Food waste means water usage. As much water as every single waterfall in Iceland running continuously for two days. Food waste means land usage. Using food waste land resources by the amount an area of land required to grow the food that we throw away is larger than Canada. Food waste means biodiversity loss. 
We exist in a dynamic ecosystem that maintains a cycle that provides us with fresh air, clean water, and good soil. The disappearance of just one ecos on one species renders this whole ecosystem vulnerable. Food waste means hunger. 2.3 billion people are experiencing dangerous levels of food insecurity. 193 million people are acutely starving. There is a direct link between food going to waste and people going hungry. Food waste means financial loss. Food waste costs us more than the GDP of the Netherlands. Food waste means furthering basically every major crisis on our planet, either directly or indirectly. In the EU, we throw more food away than we import. Food is going to waste while people are going hungry. This is all proof that at a high level, our food system is broken, it is torn apart and negatively affected by lack of communication and transparency. Now, I know we are constantly hearing about how bad things are. And as I share this, I also want to say that I promise all is not lost. We can definitely do something about this. To do something, something big with real impact, we have to understand why food waste is so prevalent across our supply chain. The food that we produce is not going to the right places at the right times. So we need a better way to allocate food. This means making sure that the right amount of the right type of food goes to the right places. If we understand what people are eating and different places that food goes to waste, we can make better decisions about what goes to different areas. Food waste is basically when the supply of demand exceeds the demand. Supply and demand. We can do this. Currently, we understand the supply. Take, for example, the Ukrainian sunflower seed market last year. It was obviously tightening supplies. The war meant that there was slow harvest and trade agreements, and this meant that the supply was significantly slower. Lower supplies, higher prices. Conversely, oversupplies of other crops can lead the price to go so low that farmers cannot afford to harvest their crops. This is because the cost of labor is higher than that of the crop they can sell. When this happens, farmers are forced to throw away the food directly on the land. So, while we understand the various conditions that affect supply, we are painfully un unaware of what affects the demand. So how can we better understand what people are eating and what people want to eat? To do this, we have to understand where people are starving, where people are undernourished, what people want to eat, and when they want to eat it. If we understand what people are eating in the places where food gets wasted, we can make sure less food that won't get eaten goes there. Big data can be our ally in the fight against food waste. We are generating unprecedented amounts of food <coughs> every day, and this data can be used to fundamentally change the way that we operate with our food system. What we need to do is communicate food trends about consumption and actual demand to relevant stakeholders. Better understanding through big data can allow stakeholders to make better decisions. We can reduce overproductions. If farmers and food producers understand the demand of what people are eating, they can make better decisions about the food that they grow on their greenhouses or on their land. Mapping out food consumption across the supply chain allows for better logistical planning. With this, suppliers and importers can make better decisions about what food to bring into different countries and at what times. Understanding what food is getting eaten can also affect consumers. Data-driven insights 
about our personal consumption habits can foster more conscious choices and help us reduce our food waste. Understanding what food is being eaten is very, under, very important for stakeholders in policy making to know so that they can make sure that they are making the right trade agreements and that they are subsidizing the right foods. Understanding food consumption and what we eat can completely change our food system. Making sure that the stakeholders in the food supply chain have access to the data about what people are eating means that we can make better decisions about what we are producing. We can target our interventions more effectively and ultimately reduce food waste across the supply chain. Think about what it means to collect and analyze data about what, when, where, and how people eat. This is what my team and I have begun to do because this is so crucial. <laughs> Understanding food consumption trends can allow us to take significant strides forward towards a world where less food is wasted, resources are conserved, and less people go hungry. This is a promising path towards a more sustainable and equitable world. Together, we can use big data communication and transparency to put an end to food waste and to reimagine our food supply chain. Knowledge in the form of data is powerful, but sharing knowledge is even more powerful. My team and I, we're done with food waste. You should be too.